What was the moment in your career working with the Cash Money guys, whether it be Wayne, BG, um, any of the guys in that, in that clique, what was the defining moment and when did you know that you had something that was gonna be a game changer? Um, a lot of people didn't know Cash Money was a bounce label before Wayne and BG and all of them came along. So, you know, the, the, and that's twerk, that's what, you know, that's what they call it now. But in the early 90s, it was like more of a twerk bounce label. And the first time I heard one of my songs on the radio, I just was like, I'm not going back to nothing else. This is where I need to be at, right here. <laughs> the first time I heard a song on the radio, so that defined it right there. What was the right first there. song you heard on the radio um, from your clip? It was a, no, it was, it was actually um, this girl, Magnolia Shorty, who was with Cash Money, like, you know, back in the G or whatever. And she was, she was before Lil Wayne and all of them. Like, you know, and I did a remix, um, like, just mashed two songs together, and she did, like, this bounce verse over it. And they, and they, they went crazy over that song in New Orleans, and I was just like, I'm a king. <laughs> I'm the <a> shit. <laughs> and what, what, what was your experience with Wayne early on, and what was that first moment that defined? I was a big ju ju juvenile fan out the gate. I mean, Juvie was my guy. And then Wayne somehow came on the scene and changed the whole imprint of the label. Well, Wayne was always the first one there, the last one to leave. And he, um, wow. if you missed a session, he always had a verse for it. Wow. Like, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and there's a lot of Cash Money songs, like when a video came out, it wasn't the same verse or whatever. But when, when whoever missed the video or whatever, if we had to edit that song that day, it was always Wayne. Wayne was like, I got a verse for it. Don't worry about it. I know all the parts. Move. I got this. So he was always the first one there, last one to leave, and had a tablet full of songs. So I was like, I know this kid is going to, you know, he's going to be a star. And any, any subject that we could make up, he had something for it. If I came in there and said, hey, dude, we going to... Um, talk about Jupiter today. He had a rhyme about Jupiter. And I was just like, dude, like this kid right here is going to be a star. And, and just how quick his approach was to songs. He would knock them out like, you know, and, you know, like, I just, you know, perfect Shh. practice. That's all I could say. Like, you give him one take. He did the hook, the, you know, the verses and everything. And, was it friendly competition? Did you ever oh, find yeah. that there were, that there was, and did it That's ever get That's what was ugly? incredible about the Hot Boys. It was friendly competition. It was a lottery write. Hot boys. It was a lottery write. So if, if Juvie came and he wrote a hot verse, you know, Wayne would come back the next day and be like, nah, I got to kill him on that. I'm going to do, my, I'm gonna do mine over. Like, that's what made it cool. Like, it was that friendly competition to outdo each other. And one more thing. Talk about your drum patterns. I mean, people have mimicked and... There's been so much talk about you and, and, your, and, and what you did with your drums. Talk about that and, and, and how that has changed, or if it's changed at all. I think um, it's just growing up in New Orleans. Like, New Orleans is just a, a city that's filled with musicians, a bunch of bad drummers. Like, you know what I'm saying? Badass drummers. So I grew up listening to all of these different patterns, and I, it's just like gumbo. I just put my own little spin on it and came up with something that was unique, you know, with the hi-hats doing triplets and all of that, you know, and my snares doing um, 32s or whatever. Of course, everybody do that, you know, but it's all right. I'll let them use it. <laughs>